Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video 13 of our series on rediscovering the C programming language. In this video, we're going to be talking about structures. And structures are a way that we can kind of organize our variables, uh, group some of our variables that kind of uh, tend to, you know, logically kind of refer to something similar, right? So in our case, uh, we're going to be referring to the position that a character in our game is standing at. So they're going to have an X position and they're going to have a Y position, right? So I could store those as separate variables or I can build a structure that I can now use to pass around as my hero's position, right? Because our, my, his X and, his, and the Y position kind of belong together, right? And so this helps me kind of organize uh, my code a little bit better. Now the way that I'm going to build a structure, and we've seen them previously, uh, we had them in our last uh, video on files uh, where we ran the stat uh, command or the stat function against a file name and it returned a structure to us and we were able to access members of that structure uh, to pull out the user ID, when it was created, um, the type of you know file it is, is it a directory or regular file, so on and so forth. We're going to keep it simple in this video. We're just going to define a struct, uh, so this is a keyword, and we're going to name it uh, coordinate. It's going to have two members of type unsigned int. Now they could be different types. I could have a structure that defines my whole character. So now it even has his name or her name, uh, which would be, you know, a character array, right? So there's lots of things that I could put in here. In my case, again, we're going to keep it simple. Just uh, an X position. So I have a member called X and I have a member called Y. And so then this essentially defines what a, a struct coordinate looks like. And so then in order to allocate space for it, I do struct coordinate. I name my uh, variable chord one and I pass in two values in order to fill in X and Y, right? And then I can access those individual members by just using this dot syntax, right? So chord one dot X will pull up 500, chord 1.y pulls up 125, and I'm able to print them out. Now, structures can get pretty big. You might you know, put a whole lot of information in here uh, because you're defining your whole character, right? Um, and passing around that entire structure, that's a lot of data to move around. Um, and so typically what you'll do when you're passing a struct in and out of a function is you'll build it into a pointer, right? So if we slide down, we can see what that kind of looks like. So I've only used the address of in order to make it simple, but essentially I still have struct coordinates. So this is the type. I'm defining a pointer uh, to that. I'm naming it P chord one and I'm giving the address of my coordinate one up here. So now when I want to access those X and Y positions, instead of using the dot syntax, I have to use this arrow syntax because not only does it access the member, but it has to first dereference this pointer and then access the individual member. So it dereferences P chord one and then accesses uh, you know, X and Y. Okay. So not a, not a difficult syntax, but then the last thing we'll cover before we go to our example is the use of type def. So type def allows us to create a new data type name. So typing out struct coordinate, uh, each time can kind of get, you know, to be a little bit of a pain. So instead we can do type def. We're taking the original type and then we're renaming it chord or just chord. So now when I want to define a new coordinate, instead of doing struct coordinate, I can just do chord and then the name of my variable and then fill in, you know, those uh, member data, right? So you'll often see structures uh, have a type def because it's just easier to refer to it uh, like this instead of like that. 
Okay, so let's jump into an example. We're gonna stick with uh, this coordinate and we'll define a hero. And so over here, I've already built a, a make file and my make file is expecting that I'm gonna have this board.c and I'm gonna have a board.h. Now, why am I defining a header file? Well, with structures, oftentimes, uh, you're gonna define it in some place, and then you're gonna go ahead and uh, share that amongst multiple source files. So if uh, I pass a, uh, a coordinate into one function defined in this source file, and I pass uh, it into a different function defined in a different source file, they both understand what a struct coordinate looks like, right? And so typically then I'll define that in this header file because then I can share that header file amongst all my source files. So let's define that. So vi board.h, I'll have my typical header guard if n def, if n def board h. And if this syntax looks odd to you, uh, I did do a video, it's one of my first videos, first or second videos in this series um, that talked about how to uh, kind of structure our uh, structure RC programs. So, oops, all I did was copy that over again. This happens when I type and talk. Define, pound, and if, all right? So everything in the center here uh, is what's actually going to carry forward and if I include the header file multiple times it only gets brought in a single time so struct coordinate I have my opening bracket unsigned int in my case uh, unsigned int y I close the bracket and semicolon right and so I have a struct coordinate that has two members, both of which are non-signed int, but as we talked about before, I could have multiple different data types here, right? So I'll go ahead and save that. Quit, and now vi board.c. So I'm gonna do a pound include for our stdo.h so that we can print. I'm gonna pound include, and I'm gonna bring in board.h that I just built. I'm not gonna pass anything into my main function and I'm gonna define a struct coordinate hero and my hero is gonna be standing in the center of my board um, and I'll have int result so that when I call one of the functions I can return something. And so maybe I want to print position and I'm going to pass my hero into that and I'm going to go ahead and try to make my hero walk result equals walk left I'm going to pass in my hero and I'm going to say he's going to go 25 positions or 25 steps and then I'll return zero at the end of my main function and we'll be done. So now, now I need to define these two functions and, and have them take in a struct coordinate. So the first one was a print position, static void, uh, print position, and this takes in a struct coordinate. Uh, my next function, static int, and we'll, this one is walk left. Uh, it takes in a struct coordinate and we'll have unsigned int uh, steps. Well, I don't have to define the variable name there. Basically just telling the compiler what these two functions bring in. And, oops. So we have our print function and it's going to look something like print f we'll give it uh, our x position percent d and we'll have our y position percent d 
I have a carriage return. Now I need to give this a variable name. So we're just gonna call it C to keep it simple, C.X, C.Y. And close out. So this print position will bring in a struct coordinate. We're gonna name it C. And then we're just gonna access the individual members of this uh, structure, C.X and C.Y. So we're just gonna print them out, all right? So now walk left. We're gonna go ahead and we have to check to make sure they're not gonna walk off the end of the board. Now this one's gonna look a little odd because I have two unsigned ints and I'm gonna subtract. Uh, and C gets a little bit weird when you're trying to subtract. So essentially, if I take an unsigned int, which cannot be negative, and I subtract an unsigned int, which also can't be negative, um, the result will never be negative, right? Um, and so what will actually happen is it will wrap and it will then end up being a high number. So I need to make sure when I do this subtraction that I don't go to a high number. That way I know that I didn't walk off the end of the board, right? So it'll look a little bit weird, but that's all right. So this is struct coordinate C and we'll call this steps. And we'll say uh, if c dot x uh, minus uh, steps, we want to make sure that that is less than c dot x. So we want to make sure that the result it goes down essentially, because if it goes up, we knew we know it wrapped around zero. All right. Uh, now we'll say uh, that this did. Uh, take place. So we'll do C dot X minus equals uh, steps and we will return zero indicating success. Otherwise, we're going to return one indicating uh, we were not able to walk left, All right? So we need to validate uh, if zero is equal to result. Print F and we could have done it, you know, failure or whatever, but in this case, we'll say walked left. All right. Otherwise, it's just going to print the position out again uh, and we'll be done. So assuming I typed everything correctly, we'll do a single make and I did not type everything correctly. So let's figure it out. So I expected a comma or a semicolon before int on board line nine. So more than likely I missed something. I did, I missed a semicolon right there. And so I got my sem semicolon in there. We'll go ahead and make again. And this time it compiles and it runs, All right? So we started out at position 256, 256. It says we walked left but the result is still 256, 256. Now, why is this? Well, uh, this is just like uh, in our video on uh, pass by reference or pass by uh, value. Uh, so in our case, we passed by value. So we obviously know that our hero structs values are making it into these functions. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to print out our coordinates. So we know those coordinates are making it here. Uh, and it looks to me that we returned zero. Otherwise, we wouldn't have printed walk left. So we've got here, but yet this didn't update the actual value. And this is because when we passed by value, it basically created a new uh, struct coordinate on this local stack for this function. So that's not going to work. We want to be able to update it so that it updates our hero uh, back in our main function. Now to accomplish this, we're just going to change this into a pointer. We're going to do uh, pass by reference this time. All right. So now this is going to take in a pointer. Instead of passing in hero, I'm going to pass in the uh, address of hero. Here I will receive a pointer 
And now I can't use the dot syntax anymore. I have to use the arrow. Now, in one of our previous videos, we talked about using pointers safely. So if I'm going to bring in a pointer to this function, before I try to reach into it to touch X, I need to make sure C actually has a value, right? So there's an actual address in this thing that I can use. So if null is equal to C, we know that it didn't have a value. F print F standard error. We're going to say uh, null pointer, right? So not that great of a message, but the point is, is that I don't want to reach in uh, to C anymore unless I know that it has some type of value, right? Or it has some type of address, right? So we'll go ahead and recompile and we'll rerun. And we do see now that uh, we started out at position 256 and we walked left to 231. And just to validate that uh, our crazy comparison down there is working correctly, uh, we'll try to walk left, uh, let's say 500, right? So this should put us well off of the board. We'll make run and notice we didn't walk left we stayed in our same position so we know that this comparison uh is working so in our case we'll walk 50 um recompile and rerun and we're moved down to 206 okay so the last thing we'll talk about is that type def right so instead of uh, typing struct coordinate every time. Instead, let's go ahead and build in a type def. So we can do board.h. And there's two ways that I can go about this. I can either do a type type def and define the new uh, the new name down here as chord or I can leave it that way and do it on its own, right? So I can do it on its own line, type def struct coordinate chord. Either one will work. So it's really up to you how you want to do it. But now instead of saying struct coordinate, I can just refer to it as chord. So I'm gonna quit. Now just to show you that uh, this hasn't messed anything up. We can make it compiles. Uh, I can run it. It still works. All right. We'll go ahead and I'll do a percent %s um, to do a search for struct coordinate coordinate, and we're going to change this to just chord. And so all of my struct coordinates now are just chord. All right. So assuming that substitution worked correctly, I will recompile and rerun and it still works. But now all I have to do is refer to this as chord hero instead of struct coordinate hero. And it's just it's less typing, you know, ends up looking a little bit nicer, right? So that's structures. Um, we've talked about, you know, just defining the structure this way. Uh, once you pass it in as a pointer, uh, you, you need to switch from the dot syntax to the arrow syntax like this, right? And this just helps me kind of organize my code a little bit better, uh, group like variables together because they all refer to, in this case, my hero's uh, position that they're standing at. Um, and so structures become very useful, really useful when we start actually building, you know, uh, data structures and things like that. So hope this video was helpful. I know it was really simple, um, but a lot of my videos have been going way too long and nobody, you know, really wants to watch it, you know, for an hour. So I'll cut this one early and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.